QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Bank Reconciliation Report. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to look at the Bank Reconciliation Report. The Bank Reconciliation Report, like all other reports, is going to provide supplemental information or more detail about the core financial reports, balance sheet and income statement. More specifically, Bank Reconciliation providing more detail on the balance sheet account of cash. The Bank Reconciliation Report is a little bit different than some of the other reports, however, including you know, the balance sheet and the income statement, in other words, are created from basically transactions on, say, the homepage. These normal transactions, enter bill, pay bill, invoice, uh, pay, uh, receive payment. <laughs> Those are going to be used in order to create the balance sheet. These are financial transactions that are going to be used to create the balance sheet and the income statement. And then the supplemental reports then are going to provide more detail, which will typically be created by these these forms as well. With the bank reconciliation, it's a little bit different because we're kind of tacking on. It's kind of like an audit or an internal control procedure that we are doing to the cash section. So we're going to look at the cash because cash is so vitally important. Then if we can double verify cash using kind of an internal control or another procedure outside of the normal bookkeeping process, that's going to give us another internal control on our books. So it's not a normal process of us creating the books but rather a process of us double checking the books often resulting however in us being able to fix things <laughs> we'll, we'll often have to add transactions or adjust transactions due to that internal control that's how important it is so the bank reconciliation process is one of the major internal controls that we want to make sure that we do second only to the double entry accounting its system itself which is done by quick which is kind of forced on us by quickbooks quickbooks will not let us post something in general that's not in balance, meaning the balance sheet being in balance is our first internal control, our first check against making errors. QuickBooks forces us to do that. The second big internal control is to verify our cash account with the use of an outside third party check, that being the bank. Why is that so important? Not just to verify cash, but because cash is involved in every major flow, including the accounts payable or vendor cycle, customer cycle or sales cycle and employee cycle therefore if we can verify cash we are also getting a double check an audit kind of procedure more more security that all of our cycles are done well given the fact that cash is the lifeblood of the company it's the thing that's going to be flowing through everything so that's going to be the idea of the bank reconciliation process now just realize the bank reconciliation is often confused with the bank with the bank reconciliating process we'll talk a lot more about that when we actually do the bank reconciliation but just realize that the report itself is actually the bank reconciliation that's the end product but many times people do the bank reconciliation process and they think that the process of doing the bank reconciliation is actually the bank reconciliation so it's it's a little bit different than that so let's just take a look at how the bank reconciliation is, is done like just in terms of the logistics within QuickBooks, you would go to reports drop down. I'm sorry, you'd go to the banking drop down, reconcile, and then you'd go through this little window. I won't do it now, but we're going to reconcile. We're pretending at the end of March, continue. And this worksheet then would be comparing our books to the statement. And once, you're, once you've done it all correctly, you get this little zero down here. And that means that you have reconciled and then you can, then you can reconcile. Now, when people hit this button and say they have reconciled, they usually think that that is the reconciliation. That's reconciliate teen. That's the process of reconciliate teen. And then this little window will create the bank reconciliation, which is actually the report that we'll take a look at now. And that's an important distinction. It's, it's good that if people are doing the bank reconciliation, even if they're not looking at the report, that's great because that's still a, a huge internal control. But you also want to kind of print the reports and make sure you have a static copy of those reports. So let's take a look at our reports. Now, let's first open the balance sheet because obviously we're going to be focusing in on cash, balance sheet account, reports drop down, company and financial. We're going to go on down to the balance sheet standard. I'm going to change the dates in the top so we can use the zoom function from 010121 to 022821 and then run that report. So we're trying to verify our cash account here. Notice if I double click on cash, we then have the activity. This is what we have recorded on our side, independent from the bank. 
Now note that if you're recording all this from directly from the bank statement, then you are not independent from the bank. That might be a fine system to use, but it, it would, it's not a full service, basically accounting system, right? You're, you're basically taking all your information directly from the bank. If you were doing the full, full service system, you would be in, entering your data independent from the bank. And then the, when you look at the bank statement, then you can compare what you have recorded on your side to what they have recorded on their side. I, I'm not saying it's not a bad thing for for some companies. You may may work quite well to take your information from the bank, such as using bank feeds directly and creating your entire books from the bank. Some companies might be able to do that. We'll discuss that more later and in bank feeds. But just realizing a full service system, we record all our books independent from the bank, and then we check our books to the bank as a double verification. And that's what the internal control typically would be in a full service, basically accounting system. So here's our information. Notice there's a lot of transaction types over here. It's not just, you know, a couple transaction types, as is the case with most other accounts. That's because cash is going to be involved in so many, so many transactions. Every cycle in the company involves cash, typically in some way, shape or form or at some point in time. So that means that if we can verify cash, then we're, we're verifying uh, a lot more than just cash. So then let's go to the reports, the bank reconciliation report. If we go to the drop downs, you couldn't find it by going to banking. You can go to the reconciliation or previous reconciliation, or you can go to the reports drop down to the report center. And I have it maximized. I'm going to go to the banking section in the report center, and then we will scroll down to that previous reconciliation. Now note that word previous reconciliation means that you have access to the prior reconciliation and it's going to look a little bit different when we make it it'll be in a pdf format i already have them uh, updated here but they'll look a little bit different now when you first reconcile the report will look similar to every other report and then when you go back into it it may look more like a pdf type of report so also note that this indicates that it's more difficult to get to a prior reconciliation so if you reconcile each month then you kind of have access to the previous one in the system but it may be more difficult to get to the prior ones in the system. That means that once you reconcile, you really want to print it out. You want to save the reconciliation, have a static copy somewhere. And, and that's really helpful because notice that if, if you've reconciled and something happens and someone backdates a transaction, like if you've reconciled and somebody deletes a check in the prior time period, that could mess up your reconciliation, right? If, or if somebody like deletes a deposit or changes a check in a prior time period, then that can change the reconciliation and you want to have a static reconciliation that will not change with a with a backdated change that's that it is what it is when you reconciled so that you can kind of you can you can then go in and see those changes you'll be able to kind of fix that so make sure to print the reconciliation after each time you reconcile it's, it's worth doing so then if you run the report uh, you'll get either a a summary report or a detailed report. You really need the detailed report, but I'm gonna show both of them uh, so that we can see them here. The summer report's a little bit easier uh, to see. It's obviously a summary. <laughs> the detailed report's a little overwhelming. QuickBooks gives more detail than you need. So remember the, the reconciliation, what it's doing is if we took a look at, at the, uh, this is a mock bank statement that we have here. So mock bank statement as of 22821. And this shows us the, the beginning balance, the additions, the subtractions, and then the detail of the deposits and the checks. This would be from the bank. And we want to verify this and check this to our books. So you would think the balance as of 228 would match our books. But if we have a full service bookkeeping system, it will not. Meaning if I go to my balance sheet as of the same date, it's uh, 108504 here and it's uh, 104. So there's going to be a difference. There's a reconciliation difference. Why? because there's always going to be a timing difference. If we record things on our side, then we know we wrote a check, for example, but it didn't, it may not have cleared the bank. So there's always going to be something out there that's a timing difference. And that's okay. It's the bank's not wrong. In that case, we're looking for a situation where nobody's really wrong. They just don't yet have the information. There's an informational lag. And if we can tie down our books to simply that informational lag reconcile, then we can be sure that gives a high level of assurance that everything is input correctly. And that means that cash is good. And if cash is good, then everything else is much more likely to be correct. So that's going to be the idea. So this, this 104, 689, 
then I want to tie out, I want to reconcile, know exactly what the difference is between it, bank statement amount, and the balance sheet amount of the 108504 as of the same date, the end of the month, uh, 22821. Now you can't, you cannot reconcile, no, some people try to think about wanting to reconcile by just printing the transaction detail from the bank. You can't do that because you don't have a solid beginning balance. So you really need to do it on a monthly type of periodic basis. So you always know what the beginning balance is. You know where you stood last time in terms of outstanding balances. And then you can move forward from there. It has to be a static, you know, set of time. So months work perfectly. So that's typically what will be used. So then if you look at the summary, then this is the activity that on top that you don't really need, but QuickBooks puts it in there. It's basically mirroring what's on the bank statement. So this top item shows the clear transactions. So that means the bank started with 89,335. That's what was on the bank, not on the books, 89,335. And then we had the decreases 25,590, the decreases uh, 25,590, the increases, the 40,945, 40,945 to get to the ending balance that cleared 104,689, which ties out to the 104,689. So that, that, we don't really need that information for the reconciliation. If you if you're going into the reconciliation, you want to know this amount, which is which we now saw is on the bank statement, and see what the difference is between that and our amount, which is all the stuff that would be on our books that has not yet cleared the bank because of a timing difference. And that includes checks, in this case five checks. So these five checks here, we just those are just things that we know about. They're they're correct. They're not errors. They're correct, but they haven't cleared the bank. And then this deposit is something that, that we know about. We recorded it, but it hasn't cleared the bank. And then that gives us the difference. That's the reconciliation. If we can tie that down to the penny, or at least the dollar, if we tie it to the penny, then that would be better. Because <laughs> any, any deviation from tying exactly out lowers the amount of assurance a lot. Like a small deviation lowers the amount of assurance a lot. So then, then that's the reconciliation to the 108504, which is on the balance sheet 108 108504.88. So that's the reconciliation process. Now, the reason this statement isn't all that useful if you were to provide it to an auditor or something is because it doesn't tell you what the actual items are. It doesn't break. It says just five items, five check. What are they? You know, did you just make that number up? You know, what are the check numbers? Can we check if they cleared in the following month? So you need the detail report to break these two numbers out. Although the detail report has a, is, is kind of overwhelming the way QuickBooks does it, uh, but it, it gives us what we need for it. So now, now we have the beginning balance. Once again, that's the, the beginning balance, same, same top half that we don't really need. There's the 89,335. And then here's all of the uh, checks and payments. So these are all lined up. You can see these actually line up to the detail here. So these are all the ones that we checked off. They were in our system and we checked them off as having cleared the bank. And then we have all the deposits down here. These are all the deposits we checked off because they had cleared the bank. Those are these three that we checked off. And then we have the cleared balance to 104,689. So that once again is the 104,689. And then we have the uncleared items. Here's the five items, but they actually tell us what they are. So the fact that these are items that are unclear is not as important as the fact that we know exactly the dollar amount of the uncleared items and that they are timing differences because that helps us to verify not just those five items, but all items in the cash account. And by checking the cash account due to the fact that it's involved in every major cycle in the accounting process, a verification on the entire accounting process. So it's not just these outstanding checks that we're concerned with, although of course, we're kind of concerned with the outstanding checks too. So we can, we can check on these ones and see if they have cleared now. So an auditor might then like look at this and they might say, well, you know, did you just make these checks up? How do I know you didn't just like make these up? Like, where did these come from? Well, then you can, obviously when we do the reconciliation for the end of the month, it's sometime after that point. So we can then, then go online to the transaction detail, see if this cleared in March, right? And if it cleared in March, then it's a true figure. It's just a timing difference as to when it cleared. This one we would be concerned with, of course, because it's it's now past March. It's been over a month that it has been cleared. Not not unheard of. You know that might happen. Someone doesn't cash the check for a long time. But 
Verizon probably wouldn't do that. You know, they would try to cache it faster. So, so that looks a little funny. So then we, we would want to check in on that, see if it cleared. But we can check these by seeing if they cleared in the following month. And if they did, fine, no problem. It's not an issue. It's just a timing difference. That's what we're looking for. Same with the deposit here. We can see if that cleared in the following month. This, this item is, is further away from the end of the month. You would expect it to be close to like the 28th if a deposit was not declared, given the fact deposits typically clear pretty quick. If I put this into the bank on the 23rd and it didn't clear by the 28th, that would be weird. But still, if it's a timing difference, then and we see that it did cleared, then at least we know the reconciliation is right, We're, and that would be good. And so that's going to give us our ending balance to 108,504. So again, the bottom line is this reconciliation process is, is, is more of an auditing part process, like an internal control, a double check, and it's tying what we should do independently normally in a full service process unless we're doing like, so, like if I was to just take this bank statement and put it into my books, and then be and then and then use that to make my balance sheet and income statement that's different although that could be done you might actually do that that's different than a full service accounting system normally the books would be independent i put my books in independent from the bank and then i look at the bank and double check them as i do so there may be things on the bank that i need to add if anything is on the bank statement and it's not in our books we probably need to add it to our books because there's an error. So for example, bank fees is something that the bank will charge us and we wouldn't even know about until we did the bank reconciliation. So there might be things. So anything on the bank reconciliation on the bank statement, unless wrong, we would then include in our books. So we will use this process to fix things. We might make adjustments based on the reconciliation process. But in a full service accounting system, the reconciliation process isn't something that's part of the data input typically it's going to be a double check to the data that has been input so that's kind of an overview of it like we I highly recommend taking a look at the bank reconciliation process even if you're uh are familiar with bank reconciliations we'll do a bank rec for the first month which typically has challenges that are, are unique to the first month and then we'll do a bank reconciliation for the second month which will be similar to bank reconciliations basically going forward should be a lot easier once you have the first bank reconciliation reconciled.